Hi everyone, welcome back to Tara's Take. It's Math Monday and we are gonna do something a little bit different today. I have, as you can see, I have a brown paper grocery bag and we are gonna make, I got this idea from Pam. It's a, a video of hers that's a, two or three years old, but she had made some really cute little paper bags out of a paper bag. And I just thought that would be a fun thing to mass make. So grab you a paper bag if you have one. Hopefully you can get you one. And we're gonna tear the bottom open. Okay, and I'm gonna see if I can get two or three bags out of this one bag. And doing it the way, I got my receipt. Doing it the way Pam did it. Um, hopefully, hopefully. I will try to remember to link her video uh, so you can see her method. My method is, i this is my first try. I haven't even done it by myself, so there you go. I'm going to go ahead and take these handles off the bag. Okay. Gently. And now we've got the bottom open. We are gonna open up this line that seals it, as Pam called it, a tube. Because once you open the bag fully, it is like a tube. She's right. Sorry for all the crackling paper in your ears. Oh, I got another receipt in here. <laughs> Sprouts and Trader Joe's. This was one that Cordy brought me home something from the store that day. Okay, so here we go. So you're just going to take your finger and kind of get that started. And you can use, you know, you can use a tool here if you want. So far, so good. Mine's tearing all right. Okay, so now you have this whole huge piece to work with. Okay, so now. I am going to make my bag. So this is going to be this is going to be the top, okay? And this side is going to be the bottom. And so I am going to make mine about I'm going to do this one about 8 inches, okay? So I'm going to go about right there. That should be about right. And we're just going to tear. And I just watched her video and I'm hoping that I remember correctly what she did. Okay. Set this aside for a sec. We'll be using that again. And don't worry about your crinkles and stuff like that. And I'm going to go ahead and take this side off because it's torn as you can see. Oh, let me do that again. I kind of messed that up. There we go. I wasn't holding it tight enough, and I kind of shredded that. There we are. That's better. All right. Now, this is where, okay, so we remember this is our top. This is our bottom. So this is where we're going to fold it. And I don't want this on the outside. I mean, I could, actually, because, you know. It is Trader Joe's, so it's got a fun picture on it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to fold this in and make it into a tube shape. Okay, let me get my glue ready. <clears throat> you can use whatever glue you want. Now, if we wanted to do gussets on the side at this point, we would fold it in and then we wouldn't glue it, okay? First, we would, um, wait, let me get this straight, there we go. Get my little bone folder here. And she said to give yourself about two inches. I noticed when she glued her, she glued it on this edge, but she didn't really glue it like toward the center. I think when I glue mine, I'm probably going to do it more toward the center too, so that it kind of keeps that part sealed. I don't know, I just have a feeling that would be flipping up on me a little bit. Okay, so if, I'm going to try, let's see, 
How did she do that? She folded it in. And then she brought it over like this. And then, okay, I remember. So let's do gussets on this one. We'll just go for it. I just barely watched this part. So you're gonna fold it over and, and depending on how deep you want your gusset to be, that's how far in you will do, do it. I'm doing mine like she did about a half an inch. Close to. <coughs> okay. And now when you open it, what you're gonna have is a shape like that. Okay, so then you're gonna take this and you're gonna be, um, this is the part I gotta remember that she, what she did. Let me look here. She took it and folded it this, oh, that's right, this way. And then made it like that. So that it turns into an M, okay? So it goes from looking like that to looking like that. And that's a little, gusset on the side of your bag, okay? So all you do is bring this over and make that middle fold go into the inside, okay? And then the other two to make an M, okay? So that center fold goes on the inside and then the two on the edges go on the outside. If I could just get it to cooperate with me, we'll be good. There we go. That's not bad. I hadn't even practiced that. <laughs> okay, now. <clears throat> I'm noticing down here that I'm kind of uneven, so I'm just going to even this out a little bit. All right. Now, no glue. Okay? So, which side do I want? Um, so I'm just going to add some glue on this inside. Like I said, she didn't do that. I'm only doing it because I noticed that I just thought, well, that might flap, you know, or be like if you put stuff in the bag, it'll get caught in that gap. So, and then you're just going to fold it over. Okay. All right. These are really easy. Good idea, Pam. As always, I haven't watched any videos in so long that um, I hadn't seen Pam in forever. And I thought, well, I'm going to jump over and watch her. And sure enough, I found this. Okay, so now we're going to use a piece of the bag. I'm just going to go ahead and cut um, a piece off of the bag. Because I'm going to make more bags. But I think this will... be about enough and what we're going to do is we're going to create a bottom for this okay so you're going to want to take your paper I'm going to even out my edges a little bit so I'm going to rip that edge <clears throat> and then what you want to do is oh, sorry there we go I'm going to do it from the top. There we go. So you're going to go like that. Oh, that's really uneven, huh? doesn't matter. We're going to trim it again. So it's okay. So from edge to edge, all right? And you're just going to, I'm going to turn it over. It's easier for me to cut from the bottom like this. Okay? Without cutting your bag, like the side of your bag. Be careful. And then we're going to cut this down to about, uh, about about there, so about an inch and a half or so. Okay, and then you're gonna fold this in half. And then we're gonna grab some pinking shears. You know what, I'm just gonna use my little scissors here. I think I'll use Nope. Because you know, like she was pointing out, bags have that roughened, perforated type little edge. So we're going to put that on ours. And you're just going to cut it straight across. 
as straight as possible. I tend to go crooked with pinking shears, so we'll see. Not bad, not bad. Okay, and now we're gonna use some ink. I think I'll use my walnut stain for this. She used black on the one I was watching her make. It looked really cool. Um, yep, I'll use this. And we're just gonna darken this edge before we glue it on. Make it look nice and grungy, like an old paper bag. And you can make these as big as, or as small as you want for your journals, uh, or you can make them for gift bags. They'd be fun little gift bags, or they'd really be cute to mail out, like when you, you know, how we share with each other happy mails and ephemera and stuff like that. They'd be really cute ephemera holders. Um, yeah, just fun. So now, this is the bottom of our bag, which I am seeing now that I cut really uneven. So I'm going to even that out. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me. It's my first day or second day on my new medication, and it's got me a little bit. I'm trying. <laughs> it's got me a little bit out of it. Okay. Um, so then we're just going to put some glue. Stick this on the bottom. A little bottom edge. Oops, I'm not going deep enough here, sorry. I'm gonna do it like that so I get it right up to the edge. There we go. Into that fold. There we are. And there is the bottom of our bag, okay? Our little gift bag or whatever we want it to be. Mine went over on this edge just slightly, so I'm going to trim that off a little bit and just re... There we go. Okay. And now we're going to do the same to the top with the pinking shears. So, and again, you can make this as tall or as short as you want. How wide is this one? This one is four and three quarter inches so it would technically fit on a page inside of my journal so I'm probably going to make sure um, let me measure the height <clears throat> just so I know it fits because I'll probably put it in my gentleman's journal now that I'm thinking about it and make one for that so I'm just going to trim off about yeah about an inch across the top Seems like every time I get to the end, it wants to scuff up on me. These cheap little scissors. I don't know. They're they're supposedly decent ones, but anyway. Okay, so now at this point, you've got your little bag. Isn't it cute? Look at that. And it was so easy. Um, I am. I think I'm gonna do what she did on this one. At least um, I'm gonna do a little thumb hole here for fun, just cause it'll look cute. not wanting to cut. Oh my gosh, it's stuck. Oh no, it ripped it. Oh man. That silly thing. Here. Good enough. Okay, there we go. I am not even sure why that happened. It got stuck for whatever reason. Oh, I think I have paper stuck in here. That's probably why. I don't know. Is it just that paper? Maybe. Let's see. Huh. Well, it must have been paper cut over stuck. I mean. All right. So there's the first one. And then she just kind of went around and edged it with some black. And mine's, of course, walnut. Just to make it look kind of grungy and fun. And I'm probably going to either use stamping or. Um, maybe stickers on this. I don't know yet on that on decorating the outside, but 
This will make a cute pocket for the inside of my journal, though. I do know that. Or I could put it inside of one of the sleeve pockets that I create for the inside and the back cover, the front and back covers. Either way, it's going to be adorable. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I love it. Thanks, Pam. Okay, so let's do another one. And this one I'll do without the gossets. Let me put it up here with my handy dandy folder. I'm just going to go ahead and tear this piece off because I probably should have just used that for my fold on my bottom. Look at that, it's almost perfect. this my top. So again, I'm going to do it so that, I'm going to make mine so that they fit inside of journals. So I want to make sure they're not too tall. Seven inches is good because then that gives me room to cut and still have um, still have a nice side bag. Oops. Dang it, my core. That's okay. I'll figure it out. That'll be possibly the part that I cover up anyway, so it won't matter. Okay. You know what? I'm going to do the assembly line thing like Tina does, I think, and I'm just going to go down the line and, um, yeah. That's a little bit big. Let's do it like that. That way they're already cut and I don't have to mess with them. I can just fold and have fun. I hope you like them. I really liked them. I thought they were so cute. I was like, this is a very cool idea. Leave it to Pam. She's always coming up with something. That girl. I heard Tina say one time she was Pam's the most creative person she's ever seen. Like she never runs out of ideas. And that's how it seems. Like she literally just never runs out of ideas. Oh, this one tore bad. Uh oh. Okay. That one's a mess. I don't know how I'll fix that one, but you know me. I'll try. And this I'll trim. I'll just trim this right along here. So this one will be a little bit shorter one and no biggie, right? These two. Doesn't really matter. How tall, like I said, they can be as short or as tall as you want them, as skinny or as wide. All up to you guys, as always. So, on this one, we have a little bit that needs torn off. Okay. And we're going to do our fold. And again, I want to make sure it is um, narrow enough to fit inside of my journal. So I'm going to tear a little bit more off of here. Don't need all of this. Okay. And this one, I don't think... I'm going to fold it there. Huh. Do I want to do that or do I want to? Yeah, that's fine. There we go. Let's see. Just measuring real quick here, guys. I want to keep it down a little bit. I'm doing mine around four and a half wide, I think. And this one I'm not going to do gossets or gussets, whatever it's called. Um... I'm just going to glue. Just going to glue it here. And here. I might just run my glue. It just annoys me. The thought of it, I don't know, 
being gapped in there annoys me. <laughs> you know, it's silly. Anyway, you know me. There we go. Okay. Now that strip I did, I think, actually might be a good for the bottom. Um, I'm kind of thinking that it might be. I did that really sloppily. That's just my quickie how I work when I'm by myself, I'll be honest. Just tore that right, right off of there. And I agree with her about your, like your folds and your creases and wrinkles and stuff like that. Don't even worry about them. Just, you know, it might be a little bit too narrow. So I'll use what I had cut originally. It's all right. It's all good. We'll just go down the center of this because this is wide enough to cut into two pieces to use. All right. Anyway, she had been saying, you know, just don't even worry about it. Um, how you how you do this because it's it doesn't matter if it's wrinkled or your bag's torn up because you know you just use some ink on top of it ink it and make it stand out and it just makes those lines look really old and creased and cool so, so I'm gonna fold this again in half once we're done doing this one I I'm gonna I think I'm gonna use my other See if my other pinking shears work a little bit better. They're just stronger. But yeah, just have fun with it and make it look old and worn, you know, which is cool. Let's use, um, what color do I want to use this time? I want to do one in blue. I'm going to do one with blue, of course. Oh, I like that. Blue on top of brown. My favorite. From speaking to you guys, it's many of our favorites, actually. It's got that grungy appeal, you know? It just, I don't know, something about it. To me. Okay. I think I'm going to stand up for a minute and work standing up because... My legs are hurting me from sitting. Okay, go. There. So now we're gonna do the bottom. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just sit that in there right now because that glue dries so fast. And then that way I can just work with the other side. Me and my sloppy glue. Okay. Use my bone folder and seal that pan. There's my bottom. Yay! Cutesy, cutesy. Oops. A little bit uneven there. There we go. All right, um, I think I'm going to use, just in case, I don't want it to tear again. i use my bigger one here, just to give it a snip. There we go. These are fun. I hope you like them too. So you have two different styles, one with the gussets and one without. Like I said, you can make them as big or as small as you want. Probably Knowing me, I'll probably end up gluing them in, but I'm doing both sides just in case. Now if I end up decorating both sides, I will definitely not be gluing them in. I will put them in a, some type of pocket on the, on the outside or something. But. There's that, and to what I was talking about with the lines, just wherever you have wrinkles or whatever, just kind of go over it, let them stand out a little bit. 
makes it look dirty, kind of grungy. Which we love, we love, we love. Okay, I'm gonna do that with the other one too. This bag didn't have as many, what I could do is just go ahead and wrinkle it some. Okay. That little spot where it didn't clip right. Okay, there we go. Oops, wrong one. Started to put it in the blue. Don't do that. And then we can just go over those edges and give it that. See, with the wrinkles. There we go. Much better example of it. I love the fake leathery look. And you make the dirt and look dirty on those edges. It looks so fun. Alright. Cool. Alright, there we go. So now let's do another one. And we'll see, let's see, it's only 26 minutes in. So now that I've walked you through through a couple of them, we can talk and have our chat. I had uh, some of you contact me and ask me how things went at the doctor, and I want to say thank you for thinking of me and, and for, for reaching out to me like that. I love you, and I appreciate that you did that. Um, I'm looking at this one. I really tore that, didn't I? So I went to my doctor's appointment on the 4th on Wednesday, and that was my late husband's birthday. Happy belated birthday, my love. I said happy birthday on that day, but um, yeah, so I went to the doctor that day, and he, it turns out, okay, God is so good, you guys, because you know I've been praying and praying and praying about this, and so have many of you um, been praying for me, so I want you to know your our prayers were heard. Because my biggest concern was that I get a doctor who would listen to me, as is usually our concern, right? Because so often they just don't listen. It's unfortunate, but it's true. And um, we're going to tuck this in, this curvature here. Actually, I will turn that off. And so I get in there, and the first thing that happens is the nurse. She is this amazing young lady. She uh, and I really hit it off, and we end up talking about the Lord and she's a Christian and um, oh my goodness God is so good and she she's a praise and worship leader and she's a soloist a soprano just like me so we had so much in common so we chit chatted and everything and I kind of freaked her out because when she took my blood pressure you guys my blood pressure was at when I got there because okay I should back up and tell you about the day I went to the food drive Okay, at my church and worked there and then I had about three or four hours after that that I was just going to be waiting because I didn't want to drive all the way back home because Casa Grande is um, about a half an hour away from my house so I decided to just wait because the doctor's office was literally around the corner from my church so I decided I would wait and I went to the library and when I was at the library I really started having these palpitations of course I think mostly it was because I was tired and hungry and I ate some of these chickpea that are supposed to be really chickpea healthy cracker type or little like puffs things and I started to have these really bad palpitations and so I was like okay great so I sat at the library and read and I'm going to squish this up real quick because I like that wrinkle look I sat at the library and read for a while, got a couple of books off the, you know, donation table and sat there. And then I get to the doctor and they take my blood pressure and my blood pressure, I'm going to put gussets in this one. My blood pressure is at, don't be freaked out. It got better. It's, it was at 197 over 78. That's the highest. I've ever had my blood pressure be in my whole life. And so she immediately um, got me to lay on the table on my left side. She's like, lay on your left side. And so I did. And 
uh, we sat and that's when we chatted about church and about the Lord and everything and really bonded. And then the doctor, one of his other nurses came in and she goes, he's really chomping at the bit to get in here because she had texted him my blood pressure and he was like worried, you know. So she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll leave and finish this later. And so she left and the doctor came in. Sweetest young man, you guys. He is from the Midwest. And check this out. He is a born-again believer. He is a brother in Christ. Oh, the Lord. Oh, my goodness. And he's young. He's like my son's age. He's newly married. They just moved out here. Um, yeah, I was just... His wife was born in Indiana. He was born in Missouri. They met in medical school. I mean, it was just a beautiful story. And the Lord just, oh, he blessed me so much, you guys. I'm not kidding. I was crying. I was crying at the end of it all. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, no, I better glue it first. Um, yeah, at the end of it all, I was just a blubbering mess because the doctor, he listened to me. He read the paper. I always bring a paper with what I want to say to them on the paper because I just hate trying to explain everything verbally. It kind of makes me sound like a hypochondriac because I've got all this stuff going on. and So that way, you know, he can just read it himself and <laughs> look at it. And so, yeah, he read my paper. He's like, have you ever been tested for autoimmune blood panel? Has a blood panel ever been done? And I said, no. He goes, well, fibro and, and psoriasis show us that you do have autoimmune issues. So, um what we're going to do today is we're going to run a blood panel because if I send you to a rheumatologist right out of the gate, they're going to be like, what are you doing? You haven't even run any tests on this person. So he said, we're going to run a panel. And as long as you know, that comes back and shows markers of inflammation and stuff, he said, then we will have, you know, the insurance will be on board to pay for you to go for us to do the second set of panels which goes deeper and it's a further study and he said and then if we cannot narrow down what's going on with you ourselves here we will send you to a rheumatologist and i was like thank you so much so they have a lab right there in their office because it's a banner clinic praise the lord so then i get over i mean well there's a lot more but i'll tell you about that in a minute so then he says i want to run an ekg and he double checked my blood pressure and he goes I hear your heart is skipping beats, okay? So again, don't don't be worried, it's it's okay. He said there's two reasons for that. Either one, you have a blockage, you're blocked, and the blood's not being able to get through, or it could just be that you're one of those people who gets, you know, skips in your heart, he doesn't know, it depends on how many beats it skips, whether we worry about it or not. And he said, so I'm gonna go ahead and send you, um, or I'm going to go ahead and have her do an EKG. I'm going to throw in another color here on this one. I'm going to do a green. And he said, we're going to do an EKG and see if it is um, something that we need to worry about. And I said, okay. He said, because if it's just skipping, he goes, that's normal. We all do that. But if it's, and, and he said, and I think it's due to the, the palpitations you're having. He said, but... If it's actually a block, then we're going to have to let your cardiologist know and he'll have to, you know, do something. So he ran the EKG and it turned out that it was not a block. Praise God. I said, you can really, I was like nervous. I go, you can really tell from the test. He goes, yes, you can tell. He goes, it's not a blockage. He said, it's running as a skip. And he showed me the test and how, what they look for and stuff. And he goes, so... That's good news. He said that means that we're not going to have to do anything uh, as far as that goes. Other than he does want me to get my heart monitor that my other my cardiologist had already ordered for the end of the month, this month. He said, now when you get your heart monitor, he goes, I know this sounds weird, but I want you to live your life. I go, what do you mean by that? He goes, I want you to eat what you eat. I want you to do what you do. And I want you to make your heart uh, do what it's been doing to you so that the doctor so the cardiologist will see what's going on He'll get a true reading of what's happening to you. He said so eat what you want Live your life. Uh, that's what I mean. He goes. I want you to just 
live it up. And I said, okay. <laughs> I told Courtney, and he was happy. I said, yeah, but that's going to make me miserable. He goes, yeah, but that's going to let your doctor, your cardiologist, see what's really going on. And he said, that way he can determine what he needs to do on his end. And I said, all right. So let's see what else. Um, him and I had a great talk. It turns out they're looking for a church, him and his wife, because his mother, they've been attending what's here in Casa Grande is called the Cowboy Church. And he said, we're really looking for something a little bit uh, younger. And I said, I get you. And I said, well, I go somewhere a little bit younger. So I told him about Crossroads CG. And he's going to, he said, he, he goes, you will probably be seeing our faces there. Oh, this one's cute. It's a little. And I said, praise God. You know, so I might end up going to church with my doctor. Wouldn't that be cool? But, um, yeah, so it was just, uh, it was just so good. After he left, I felt so much better you guys oh my gosh I, I still feel like crud physically but I felt better mentally because he listened to me you know he, he listened he cared he's a brother in Christ I can talk to him for real um, I can be myself I don't have to you know if God deserves the glory you know I get to give him the glory um, yeah I was just I was thrilled I was absolutely thrilled with this so that was my doctor's appointment. There we go. Now there's a tiny one. Look at that. Isn't it cute? Look, I'll show you compared to the other ones. Look, because I tore that paper wrong, so I had to do it a little smaller. But it's good because then you guys get to see. Like this is a large, a larger one, a medium one, and a small one. So very cool, right? Okay, so let's see. We've got one more piece of paper. What time is it? I guess I can do one more. Uno mas, uno mas. We're gonna tear um, this part off. And I keep forgetting I gotta go that way. Let me make this one, let's see. Yep. Uh, and then I'll bring this over. Yes, I'm talking to myself. I know. Go ahead and tear one more piece off of here that I do not need. All right. Okay, so yeah, so it was um, pretty awesome. Honestly, I want to say thank you to all of you who've been praying for me, uh, who lifted me up because. Even right now, I, I, oh, and that's another thing. He was like, why doesn't your cardiologist have you on blood pressure medicine? Because my blood pressure was so high. He took the test again, and it, it came back down to like 145, which I know is still high, but it was better than what it was when I got there. Um, but his thing was like, why is he not, you know, giving you, you know what, I'm going to seal this better. I, see, that's what I was thinking of doesn't seal this section off. I don't like that. Um, he goes, I don't understand why he's not giving you, because he had my my medication list, you know, and I told him the deal. I said, look, between us, brother and sister, my, my doctor is, I don't know if he's a believer or not, and I said, and he doesn't really listen to me about my blood pressure. That's the one area that my cardiologist has kind of argued with me on. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't really understand that because this is gonna be the top for me here. I don't really get why he does that because I've had high blood pressure since my 30s. So I know when my blood pressure is off, you know what I mean? And he just doesn't seem to listen to me about it. And I've told him from the beginning that I don't feel like the pills he has me on are the right pills or the levels or whatever. Like, and the last two visits, my blood pressure or three visits, my blood pressure has been high. And on one of those visits, he raised the beta or the um, calcium blockers he had me on, which also act as a blood pressure pill, but they're technically not in a blood pressure pill. They, they can control the blood pressure though. So that's what he's had me on all this time. Um, and 
I tried to explain to him, I don't think it's working. Well, the last time I went, my blood pressure was really high. And the time before that, it was really high. And he's like, well, I'm going to, he goes, I want you to check your blood pressure um, for a, a while. I want you to just do some double checking on it for me and check it like once a week, three times a day. And then we'll get, and if it's still reading high, we'll do something about that. So to me, I'm like, okay, it's, it's really high. So this last time I go, my, it's at 197. Okay, so yeah, I'm thinking you need to change my, my meds. But anyway, so this doctor gave me um, a new blood pressure pill. Um, and he combined it with my water water pill that I'd already been taking. That was the other thing he, my cardiologist had done. Instead of putting me on a straight up blood pressure medicine, he had me on a calcium blocker and a water pill, which the water pill I take is hydrochlorothiazide, which can be, is also used for blood pressure. However, it's, it's more or less for, you know, water retention. Um, and so this doctor took and he put me on a blood pressure medication mixed with the HCTZ, which is hydrochlorothiazide. So yeah, so hopefully um, I'll see a difference. So today I'm a little bit, yesterday and today I'm a little bit off. And the reason is because my blood pressure is, for one thing, I'm getting used to the pill. I'm not used to being, my blood pressure is not used to being this normal. <laughs> I've been riding high for over two years and three years, I guess, since I've been with him. I've been a little bit off and um, yeah, so I'm really excited and I've been reading up on the medication and it says that it'll take, it can take anywhere from a few days to up to six weeks for your body to adjust to it. I don't think it'll take me that long, praise God. I really think it'll be fine. But um, it's just a slight bit of dizziness, not anything major, uh, and I can handle that. So, you know, just just need to lay down once in a while and kind of rest for a minute. Um, but yeah, my blood pressure's been on at like 117, 120, you know, <laughs> over 48, 58. I mean, it's been a dream blood pressure. I'm like, oh, praise God. I told Corey, I, I haven't had my blood pressure this low in so long. I can't even fathom that it's actually down. It's awesome. So what time is it? Okay, we're good. So that is the doctor update. Yeah, he's, he's a great kid. I, mean, I call him kid because he's my son's age. He's only a year older than my boy. I told him, I go, you're only a year older than my son. <laughs> and I also told him that he, he was an answer to prayer. I said, to many people's prayers. Because I've had quite a few people praying for me. And I've been praying that God would bring me the right doctor. That he would bring me to the right person. There we go. So there's that. We got four. That's not bad. I think they all take about 10 minutes or so. And they are adorable. I really like them. So which one are we going to decorate? I think we'll do this one. Because I want, I definitely want this one for my gentleman's journal. Um, I have a bunch. Not a bunch, but I have some ephemera over here. I was looking. No, that's a double side. This one would be kind of cute if it fits. Not quite. A little bit big. Okie dokie. Okie dokie, artichokey. So we're going to do um, a picture and a frame. And we might do a little bit of stamping. Because that's always so fun. So we're going to do that. We're going to put some words here. Let's do a little script. How's that? Which top? Okay. I wrote top at the top because <laughs> I always I always mess them up I do like walnut stain for this um, vintage photo never shows up good enough to me I, I tend to run into it not really standing out so much so I like this Girls, I am almost done with that digi kit, and I hope you like it. I did it in a variety of colors. I didn't stick to one particular um, color scheme. I actually made it, it's all the scheme about it is the roses. 
uh, the wild roses so it's it's more based off of that than anything and it's just um, right now I'm working on fussy cuts and like some journal cards and stuff like that. I'm looking for my stamp. I just dropped one. Where'd it go? Oh, shoot. I hate that. My carpet is not conducive to seeing little tiny things. Ah, I found it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's kind of cool because, uh, I'm working on the, the kit. I mean the fussy cuts right now. So I hope you guys, when it comes out, let me know what you think. I might actually do um, a digi kit uh, like Tina does, like a reveal, and like Tanya does. I've not. I don't think I've ever really done that. I just kind of throw it in the shop and tell you guys about it, send you freebies, and let you see it. You know. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll do an actual. Oops. I think I'll do an actual video. I just love this splotch stamp so much, especially with guy stuff. And, um, yeah, it'll be fun, I hope. I hope, I hope you like it. I ordered some ink and paper so that I could print it out and be able to actually show it to y'all. Because right now, I'm out of yellow. I wish they sold my ink in, like, the color I need. You know what I mean? And that I didn't have to buy the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. But they don't. Now I'm wondering if I should do anything like fancy flourishes or anything, or should I maybe wait? Let's let's check in here. I've got my other I've got my other stuff. Oh, that's stickers. No, don't want that drawer. I have some Tim Holtz things here. This might be fun. I always like these. I think I'll do black on this one. All right. Wait. Am I the right way? Nope. That's. Is that the right way? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, wait. I'm so confused. very fun so we'll do a couple we'll do one more on this side up here oh, I need to put my little foamy underneath I missed out on some of it shoot oh well it looks good I'm not gonna worry about it but I will do that with the foam on this one. <laughs> I'm funny I told you I'm a little dingy right now there we go Well, it's not perfect. <clears throat> Let's see if I can get a better reading up here. Need to get me one of those uh, stamping press things, you know. That one's better. I've never gotten one. So we're just kind of decorating this with stamping right now. But then when we put the picture on... Um, it'll be, it'll just be kind of cool looking to, let's see, what do we want? I've got, gosh, I've got so much in here to play with. It's hard to make up your mind. You know what I mean? So many fun things. So little time to use them all. Amen? I've got all these new ones I bought at the dollar store. What I'm looking for, I'm not, oh here it is. I was thinking because, oh no that's not it. Wait, I could have sworn I saw it. Sorry guys, I'll be back in a second. I'm just to the left here of the camera. Um, Tara, Renee, what did you do with it? Huh. Oh, you know what I do have? This would be fun. That. I like that. 
thing. It makes the coolest fun. I have all these feathers. These are fun. I hardly ever use them either. I guess I used one of them with bright pink because it certainly did stain it. I was looking here to see if any of these would be kind of cool on here. Since this is for men, for gentle men, this is one of those Dollar Tree sets. I, the ones I've tried so far, for the most part, have worked pretty good. But I will say this, they are really stuck on their plastic. I mean, like, really stuck. Big time. You can tell they've been there a minute. This is a little pipe. So cute. Not that I condone smoking, but, you know. But for little uh, thing for guys, not bad, you know, a few of them here and there. And I don't even know what will show when it's all said and done, but yeah, but it stamps okay. I mean, considering this material, I'm, I mean, the paper I'm on, because I kind of really buffed it up and crinkled it and wrinkled it and all that stuff. Meh. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and do We are going to put this gentleman think I have these really cool city stamps and I was thinking let's try that why not let's give it a shot I haven't used this in forever and I love these I actually pulled them out because I kept forgetting I even had them um, I have Italy I have Rome London, New York, and uh, what is it? Paris. Yeah. So, see, it's cute. So we're gonna put it. Oops. Get this. Hopefully, I can get a good ink, a good impression. I mean. I hope. Oh yeah, I did it. Probably shouldn't have put that right on top of the pipe, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. Those kind of things just tend to work out with what we do, you know? And I'll put him on this side too, just for fun. Actually, let's do France on this side. So because I ended up doing decorating on both sides, I probably... Oh man... Look at that, it's melted. What happened? My Eiffel Tower melted. Oh, it must have gotten too hot over here in the corner. Look at that, Oh, that's a bummer. Oh, that really stinks, this was so cute. Oh, that makes me angry. I'm gonna cut off the top of that. I know, I cut off the top of the Eiffel Tower, but. The bottom of it's okay. It's just that one spot. I don't. That's so weird because I didn't have it anywhere that it's not cool enough for it to survive. That's weird. Anyway, all right. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. I can always buy it again. Okay, back to work. Back to work. And we are going to put it above the pipes this time. There. So now you have a picture of the city on both sides. All right.
Okay, so now I'm going to grab my pictures. Okay, who do we want to put on here? I'm wondering if I have any more, because like, I have these, uh, pockets. I'm thinking, could I add a pocket to one side of this, or a tuck? Well, for right now, I think I'll just do portraits. Let's see, we gotta pick I kind of like this one. He he suits the color scheme. You know what I mean? Let me see what color portrait do we or frame do we want to put on him? Okay. Oh wait, this one might do better. This one's a little bit darker. More nah. No, I actually kind of like that one. I do. I kind of like that one. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and spread some glue on here. Take my time. I know I'll have glue, excess glue probably, but just want to make sure it sticks good. And we're going to sit it in the right spot. Okay. Oh, I should have done one thing before I did that. I should have distressed because I can see where when I cut this, there's a little bit of white right there. Glue's not sticking very good right there either. Oh, I see why, because the picture's just barely touching the edge. So we're gonna have to add some glue on the picture itself. Okay. So we're just gonna, I should have, yeah, I should have definitely gone around this edge. bottom off. I do love this kit. It's so much fun. And then, oh, you know what? I was using the wrong one for that. I'm so glad the black didn't really come off. Burn these edges some. See, that's what I should have done on the inside, and I didn't. I hate when I do that. I forget to distress. But it's going to have to do. Okay, so we're going to put him. I'm going to put him like about there in the center. Hmm. I have some of the material that we used in the no. Nah, never mind. Never mind. I'm just being silly. Now I'm just getting silly on you. All right, 
little cutie patootie here. And then we're going to put a friend of his on the back. Let's see. These guys are too big. We need the medium sized. How about this guy? Yeah, and this one we're going to tear instead of framing. I'm going to frame it with tearing and then distress it and stick him on. love that burned look around the edge. <laughs> I always have. Now, because he's got so much white on him, you know my little trick I'm going to do. Just going to kind of yellow him up a tiny bit. Just a little. His shirt was really bright. Okay. And now you can put, you know, you can put journal cards, you can put, because it's such a big pocket, it makes such a nice, large pocket, you can put pretty much anything you want. This one's got the gussets, so it's a little wider, but it'll open up nice. Or the inside there, see? Oops, gotta hold him down. Oops. There we go. So there's there and there. And now, what do we need? What do we need? You know what we need. We need words. <laughs> we need words, words, words. Or we need some kind of fun, you know, decoration, like a clock or something like that. Stamps. Yeah, stamps are fun. We could do a stamp over here on this side. Let's do that. Let's go for it. I love the fussy cuts in this kit. They're very, I don't know, something about them. They're just cool. They've been a lot of fun to work with. A lot of fun. So, oh. I'm going to put, I usually tear my edges, but I think with this, I'm going to cut it. It says field diary. Maybe this is the pouch where he keeps his field diary, you know? Praise God. Got to have a place to keep it. I think it'll go on this side. Yeah, I think I'm going to make this like an ephemera a treat bag, you know, and put it in the front of the back and <clears throat> have it filled with fun journal cards and stuff. We should do a jelly plate video and make us some backgrounds for some cool, uh, some cool cards for this journal. This journal is going to, I think the title's not very original, but I think I'm going to call it Gentlemen Only. And, uh, because it's all about the guys. It's all about the guys. Let's see. A little sign for cigars. Looks very guyish, huh? Maybe I'll use this instead. Let's use the. Oopsie. Let's 
So I'm going to brown this paper with the vintage photo. What time is it? Oh, I got to got to get moving here. I'm almost done. Almost done. So we're going to kind of round this and then I'm going to edge it so it stands out. Okay. Yeah. So what else can I tell you guys about this week? Um, I think I don't really have time to start stories. I got carried away with my decorating. I was enjoying this. Right there. I think I like things off kilter a little bit, so that's why I didn't put it right directly over him. It says France. No, it's, it doesn't. Yeah, it says France. <laughs> and then I, ripped, I messed up the French stamp, which sucks because I could have put that on there and it would have looked cool. But no, we're just going to grab a couple of these little things to kind of decorate with. This is what I've been having fun with these. Um, and it's funny, I don't usually know what to do with my tickets as much, but with this set, this kit, I was able to be a little more creative and it just kind of flowed for me. So I hope, I'm hoping to carry that on to my next projects and just, you know, let my, my imagination flow and use up stuff like this that I normally am not that great with. I kind of tend to, I don't know if this is going to be. We're going to do that. And then we're going to put something here in the corner. Okay. Uh, yeah. We're going to do this like this. And then we are going to find us the right clock. I think I have more than that big one there. I think. I've used quite a bit of them, so maybe I don't. I may only have that one. Shoot. Oh, wait. This is kind of fun. Oh, here we go. Here's one. Yeah. There we are. That's the ticket. And I'm going to grab my brush and use vintage photo lightly go over this and make it a little yellower so it kind of flows better with the picture and that's going to go in the corner or should I put it in this corner maybe I should put it over here yeah where's the beginning there we go <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to put it on this side because I don't want to totally cover up. I'll put a smaller circle in the front. I don't want to totally cover up the image of London. I like it. So we're just going to do it kind of in the corner here. And like I said, I have... Or, no, that's not the right ear. Not for this guy. Here, maybe we'll do it that way. Yeah. We're almost done. I get to decorate. Remember I used to be nervous to decorate with you guys? And now I get to go in and I can't stop. I just want it to be finished so when you see it on the thumbnail it's not like oh I didn't know she did all that so there we go we're done okay so there's the f I don't know if that's gonna be the front I, I I guess it's the front since it has that in it there's that and then there's that so I hope you guys enjoyed today's mass make and that you give these a try they are a lot of fun and super easy go to your local grocery store and if you have access there to uh, paper bags go for it I love you. God bless you. Please, if you received any value from this video, hit a thumbs up for me and maybe make a comment to send it out into the algorithm. Um, if you're still with me, that means you watched the whole thing and I sure appreciate you for doing that. 
and I love you. God bless you, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, no. I'll see you on Wednesday. Bye.